and uh, now for something completely different. Oh. So uh, yeah. let me welcome uh, Christian Todd, the director of the film about basic income. Thank Could you. you please introduce your film and tell something about the topic? Why is it important for you? And well, my film is called Free Lunch Society and it's a documentary about unconditional basic income or universal basic income as it's called nowadays. And I'm a trained economist, so I studied economics and when I searched for a topic for my graduation thesis, I stumbled over uh, this phrase for the first time, basic income or unconditional basic income. Never heard of it before, but as soon as I read uh, something about it, it, it really struck my mind that I was so uh, impressed that uh, because it was this thing I believed all my life. I just didn't have the word for it. But I'm a, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, Star Trek Next Generation fan. That's why my film starts and ends with uh, um, a Star Trek clip from a, a specific episode. And in Star Trek, in the 24th century, in this utopian society, you don't have to work in order to earn money or to live. You work because you love work. You work uh, according to your abilities, to your talents. Um, you can train your talents uh, in order to improve yourself and the rest of society. And when I first read about basic income in an article, it's really was this Star Trek feeling and I now had a, had, a, had a means to scientifically work towards this Star Trek utopia. And so it all started and since being a filmmaker too, not only an economist, it was only logical <laughs> to uh, do a documentary on this, on this topic. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> in the end of the movie, you open also the topic of uh, robotization of uh, robots um, gradually replacing human labor. So uh, do you think that uh, people uh, will be losing their jobs? Yes, uh, they will. There are studies around and the most conservative studies, uh, which were done several years ago, they state that within the next 25 years, 50% of all jobs worldwide are under threat of being automated or replaced by robots. And we see that uh, technology is, is evolving on an exponential scale. For the last 15 to 20 years, uh, the, the, the development really exploded. So when we extract, uh, extrapolate this development, in 2029, there are some people who say that in 2029 uh, we will have built a machine that is as capable as a human being in all ways, even emotions. So we can think about what this would mean for the workforce and, and for the labor market. So yes, I think it's a big threat. And I think that's the reason why basic income is being discussed more and more worldwide, because people are getting more and more aware that uh, automation and robotization poses a huge threat to our uh, current uh, uh, market economy and, and, and society. Mm -hmm. um, there was a documentary film released uh, a few years ago, I think, called The Swedish Theory of Love. I don't know, have you seen it? No, uh, uh, I don't know it, unfortunately. Uh, and it uh, discusses the, the Swedish system that um, social wel welfare state and that people actually are really uh, better off. They uh, have high uh, like life standard and that uh, they have lots of uh, free time and so on and so on, but which may be, which is the one of the hypotheses of the film, mm -hmm. generates a lot of people that are getting bored mm -hmm. and that this happiness that they should be enjoying is actually not coming. Mm -hmm. So do you think there is this kind of risk that the people will uh, reach this, this ideal life but they won't be able to um, to socialize or to, to, to function in the society because nobody will need 
their work? Well, it's a very recent um, development that we as human beings um, define ourselves by our jobs. I think this notion is about 200 years old or something. Before then, for 10,000 years, since the agrarian revolution, we defined ourselves by our spirituality, by with religions we invented. But nevertheless, we did it. We built, uh, in the Middle Ages, we built huge cathedrals, which were actually worth nothing uh, when, you, when you see it uh, um, on a rational basis. But nevertheless, we, as a community, um, built these huge things and, and put our workforce in this because we believed in something that's worth more than just what is your job? What do you do? So I think we, we could see this again with basic income and with automation coming. Um, the other day I read in The Guardian an article about who are the most happy people in the world. And the author said, well, it's the uh, Orthodox Jews in Israel. They more or less get a small basic income, they don't have to work, and they themselves in service describe themselves as the most happy people in Israel. So, <laughs> well, maybe we see uh, people engaging with virtual reality in 30 years, completely diving in into this reality, inventing their own games, inventing their own purpose in life. And on the other hand, we will uh, see lots of people like stepping back, uh, becoming uh, organic farmers, craftsmen, doing something with their hands because, because they like to do it. And of course, robots could replace them or could uh, produce all these things that humans do, but um, people just want to do it and they, they will have the chance to do it. So we will see maybe a division or m the craftsmen will eventually also go to the virtual reality world and enjoy it. Uh, but the thing is, to sum it up, we don't really know what is going to happen. But that's what I really like about it. I like that I don't know what the future will look like. Uh, I'm really curious what the future is going to look like and I'm really looking forward to having a future that I don't know, that is uncertain because that is what makes life worthwhile. You're an optimist? Yes. <laughs> so thank you very much for coming. <laughs> thank you.